Good morning, all. Welcome. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Lee Ding, who is a PhD candidate in civil and architectural engineering at the University of Miami. He obtained his bachelor's in building environment and equipment engineering from Hoasang University of Science and Technology and his master's degree in civil engineering at USC in 2018. His research interests are indoor thermal comfort control and energy models of buildings and HVAC systems. He was recently awarded the 2021 Crosby Field Award and the 2021 Willis Hedge Career Award. Congratulations. And he's going to talk to us now about uh, energy and dehumidification performance of split residential ACs. So thank you very much, Lee, it's all yours. Okay, so thank you for the introduction and thanks for the opportunity to share our research today. So my topic today is the investigation of energy and the dehumidification performance of split residential AC among different fan control modes. So we will start. So here is the outline. The first part is the introduction, and because this is not a traditional academic presentation, so the residential AC fundamentals are added to help you understand the presentation better. The second part is problem statements and objectives. Then we will show our test system and set up. Next is the results, and finally, we will give some conclusions. First is the full picture of the energy use in residential buildings. So for primary energy is around 12 plus, and uh, you can see HVAC system account for over half. And in US, nearly 90% households are equipped with AC. So what is the indoor comfort conditions? So the Usher thermal guideline give some recommendations. First it is about the temperature. So the room temperature should be around 75 Fahrenheit degree. And also the relative humidity is, uh, is important. So the relative humidity range should be between 40 to 60%. If the relative humidity is over 80%, so more will occur. So you can see the picture on the left side and it is unhealthy for occupants. So this indoor comfort conditions can be achieved by AC units. So we will talk about the basic principle for AC. So based on the classier's statement of the second law, so work is re required during a refrigeration process from a low temperature body to a high temperature body. So let's take the refrigerator as an example. So the work input as a compressor, and then the refrigerator can keep a cool inside because of the evaporator can absorb heat. And then the heat can be rejected as a condenser to the outside. So the uh, same principle in AC units. So the left uh, left side chart, you can see the work input as a compressor and absorb heat as the evaporator or the cooling coil. And the heat is rejected as a condenser to the outdoor air. So this is the basic uh, this is the basic principle. So there are two common residential AC types. First is window systems. So you can see the picture here. So all the components are packaged in a small unit. And normally, generally the voltage is 120. And this is useful in hurricane because if the hurricane destroys the supply, uh, electrical supply system, so some residents use the small generator to generate electricity. It can only, this small generator can only supply, uh, supply 120 voltage. And the next uh, system is split system. And this is more common 
and the voltage is 240. So this is has higher has larger capacity. So you can see it can be divided into two units. One is indoor units and another is outdoor units. That is why it's called split system. And in the indoor units, there is a evaporator here. And in the outdoor unit, there is a, a condenser and a compressor. So uh, we will discuss this in details. So here is an entire schematic of split AC systems. This is a indoor comfort air condition, 75 Fahrenheit degree and 50% relative humidity. And this can be achieved by the AC. And the AC includes the evaporator and the condenser. Next, the retained air should pass through a filter before entering the fan. Then we can get our supply air and the supply air temperature is demanded by the indoor comfort air condition. So for example, if you want drier indoor air, so the supply air temperature should be lower. And this is also impact, uh, this supply air temperature is impacted by the indoor fan because uh, the indoor fan can change the air flow rate and uh, lower air flow rate results in lower supply air temperature. Also, the supply air should be distributed op 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 appropriately. So diffusers are required. Uh, last one is the thermostat. This is for components uh, or for <coughs> occupants to control the system. So we will discuss this uh, all the components one by one. First, how to select the size of our AC. So we can talk about the cooling capacity and uh, the efficiency. Generally, we can estimate the capacity based on the floor area. For example, one ton is, is equal to 12,000 BTU per hour and can cover 400 square feet floor area. So for example, if the floor area is 2000 square feet, which means we need 60,000 BTU per hour and the unit should be five ton. Next is the SER, which is related to the efficiency. And it is a seasonal energy efficiency ratio for a cooling season. So the total cooling divided by the total electrical input. So the right side, you can see the outdoor units and we can find the information here. So number six, zero is the SER. And here you can see zero means SER equals to 20. And the number seven and number eight shows the cooling capacity. So here is 36 and you can see thousand here. So, which means the uh, cooling capacity is 36,000 BTU. So, we can calculate the electrical input based on this information. So, the 30, uh, 36,000 divided by the SER 20 here. So, we can get the in energy input is 3,000. And the, the AC with higher SER is generally more expensive because it requires larger eva uh, evaporator and uh, condenser. So next is a filter. So the purpose is to improve the indoor air quality. And the location is at the inlet of the AC unit as a return air site. And the replacements frequency is every three months. So you can see the filters from the pictures. And uh, how to select the filter. There are different filter types. 
and uh, we based according to the MERV ranging. So higher ranging number means uh, uh, higher efficiency and the price will also increase. Normally we use uh, MERV8, but for special pandemic case, we need to choose the uh, 13 because it can block virus. And if you travel by flight, you can see the MEPA filters. This is around, uh, this is renting uh, 17. So this is, uh, these are different filter types. The third is the supply air and the, the supply air temperature is normally 55 Fahrenheit degree for 75 Fahrenheit degree indoor air temperature and uh, 55 relative humidity. So you can see uh, this temperature, as we said, is demanded by the indoor comfort air condition. And the right side, you can see if the, uh, the condensation will occur at low temperature. So low temperature supply air means higher dehumidification capacity. So for example, if we decrease the supply air temperature from 55 to 51, which means we can decrease the room relative humidity from 50 to 43. And uh, it's, it's, and the sup supply air temperature is impacted by indoor fans. For traditional AC fans, we cannot change the air flow rates. The air flow rates is a constant. But for ECM fans, we, uh, the air flow rate is variable and can be controlled by the deep switches. So this picture shows the deep switches. So for example, if we, uh, we can reduce to 80% of rated air flow rate to change the temperature to uh, 51 Fahrenheit degree. So this will be discussed in detail in fan control modes section. And first is the diffuser. The diffusion is required to avoid the 55 degree cold supply air directly, uh, directly blow into occupants. So we need the diffusers. And the blend position impacts the diffusion. So the left chart, you can see this is a diffuser and the supply air can mix with room air. And the right side shows different direction of the supply air. There are different types of diffusers. First, high uh, sidewall diffusers. So this, the left tool shows the installation of this kind of diffusers. And you can see different plant position can change the supply air direction. So this one shows the supply air directly going down, goes down and blow to the occupants before mixing with um, room air. So this is the occupants will feel cold. So if we change the plant position, so the supply air can be blow up and and it has more chance uh, has more chance to mix with room air. So this um, this distribution is better because it can fully mixed before reaching to occupants. So that the left is not recommended, and we prefer the right side. The second type is ceiling diffusers. So you can see the installation of the ceiling diffusers here. So if, if the supply air directly goes down, so people under here will feel cold. So we need to change the blend position and we 
change the supply air direction, then we can have better uh, distribution if the uh, direction is almost horizontal. So this one is not recommended and we prefer the right side one. Third uh, is the uh, air, air, air balance. So air balance for multiple rooms. If the room, uh, if it, for example, if this office is warmer and we want to uh, keep it cool, so we can in, increase the air flow rate by changing the damper. So the damper key on the diffusers. And at the same time, we need to decrease the air flow rate at, at, um, at other rooms to keep the air balance. So we can talk about the uh, indoor fan control modes. There are different uh, control modes, fan control modes. First, auto. this is for general use. And when the when the compressor is on, so you can see the fan is on and at a fixed rated airflow rate. And when the compressor is off, so the fan is off. The second mode is on mode. So to keep uh, ventilation. So you can see when the compressor is on, the fan is on and at the same uh, as it, and this is the same as the uh, auto mode. But when the compressor is off, the fan keeps running. So uh, these two, these two modes can be switched by the switch on the thermostat. And the third one is called enhanced. And this can be only achieved by ECM fan. And the purpose is to improve the performance. So you can see the enhanced mode can be controlled by the deep switch. And uh, as we said, the um, at auto and on mode, the fan runs at a fixed rated airflow air rate when the compressor is on. And this airflow rate can be also changed by the switches. And also, if uh, when the compressor is off, if the fan keeps running, so it's called fan over running, and the intention, uh, intentionally to pick up the stored cooling energy as a coil. So these are the different control, fan control modes. We can see them one by one. These are the pictures for the left side is the picture for the auto mode. So you can see when the compressor is on, the fan on, the fan is on. And when the compressor is off, the fan is off. But for right side, you can see the on mode, the compressor is on, is the same as auto mode. And when the compressor is off, so the fan keeps running. So this is fan overruns. And the third mode, enhanced mode, we can see there are uh, multiple periods. So when the compressor is on, the fan ramping up. So you can see it here, that's for one minute. And then the fan, the fan run, run us run at 80% uh, rated airflow rate. This is for dehumidification. As we said, if you want drier uh, room air, so we need to decrease the supply air temperature and we need to uh, decrease the airflow rate. And the, uh, the fan will run at 100, 100% uh, 100 rated airflow rate if necessary to keep cool. 
And when the compressor is off, the fan overruns, but for about only for a short period. And when, after that, the fan will be off. So based on the different fan co control modes, we can point out some questions. So first, what are the airflow rates in each mode? And second, what are impacts of airflow rates and fan overrunning on energy and the dehumidification? And third, which fan mode is recommended to achieve the optimal energy and dehumidification performance? Then we can point out our objectives. First, it, uh, experimentally identify airflow rate and the fan overrunning in on auto on and enhanced mode. Second, investigate the impacts of airflow rates and fan overrunning on energy and the dehumidification performance under different outdoor air conditions. Last, recommend a fan control mode to achieve the optimal energy and dehumidification performance. So before that, we need to introduce some uh, uh, evaluation methods. So for energy performance, we need total cooling load, which equals to sensible cooling load plus latent cooling load, QS and QL. And the sensible cooling load refers to heat and related to the uh, temperature. And the latent cooling load refers to the moisture and related to the humidity. Next is a, a coefficient of performance, COP. And we have introduced SER. So this is a relationship between COP and SER. So you can see they have the same meaning, the total cooling divided by the total electrical input, but they have different power, uh, units. Is power over power. And for SER, it's P2 per hour over power. So for dehumidification performance, we need latent, cool, uh, latent cooling load, QL, and uh, also sensible heat ratio, SHR. And SHR equals to sensible load divided by the total cooling load. And third is the uh, return air relative humidity. And this can be directly measured. And all the experiments are conducted on the different outdoor air conditions. So uh, when the SHR decrease, so the sensible load decrease. So the latent cooling load increase, which means it has higher uh, Dehumidification performance uh, capacity. Then we can show our test system and the setup. So you can see the pictures here, the test home, indoor units, outdoor units. So our three tone unit serves the second floor of our residence at Miami. And the, the indoor ECM fan speed can be adjusted by the switch here. You can see the switch here. And the outdoor unit has a compressor inside. This is the system. Then we can show the measurements. Because as we said, we need the sensible and the latent cooling load. And these two can be calculated, calculated based, on the two, uh, based on these two equations. And the rho A density, CP, and HVE here are constant. So the rest uh, uh, should be measured. First is QFAN, which is the supply air flow rate. This can be measured by the hood here. And the uh, return air condition is also required. So, and also, the supply air condition is uh, 
should be measured. So these two can be measured by the sensors. As we said, the experiments are were conducted under different air, outdoor air conditions. So the outdoor air conditions should be measured. And we want to analyze the energy performance. So we need to measure the power. So the power meter is used. So these are the measurements. Then we can show the test results. Uh, it, inclu it includes three parts. First, air flow rate of fan control mode. And second, impact of fan overrunning. And third is the impact of air flow rates. For well, first, single circle fan control modes, you can see the measurements. This is auto mode. So when the compressor is on, the fan is on. And when the compressor is off, the fan is off. So there are two operation periods, fan on and fan off. When the fan on, the um, supply air flow rate is 1300. And this is 100% rated air flow rate. And when the compressor is off, it is off, the fan is off. Second is on mode. So you can see the red line on the chart. Uh, when, the uh, when the compressor is on, so this is fan on mode, this is the same as out mode. But when the compressor is off, the fan overruns at 56% of rated airflow rate. So you can see here. The third is the enhanced mode, and it can be divided into five periods. First, warm, warm up so here. So it's the airflow rate is at 59% of rated airflow rate. And the last in time is one minute. The second is the dehumidification period. This airflow rate is at uh, 84%. And the last in time is 7.5 minutes. Then is the rated airflow rate, 100%. And when the compressor is off, the fan overruns, but for a short period, which is three minutes here. And the, the airflow rate is at 59 of rated. So when the comp uh, after that, the fan is off. So based on the chart, you can see on and enhanced mode have fan overrunning here. Also, uh, we have uh, introduced this period, it is called dehumidification period by reducing the airflow rate. Also, the rated airflow rate can be adjusted by the switch here. So this is a, a single circle of different fan control modes. Then we can see the impacts of fan overrunning. So on energy performance, we can see the left, char, uh, left side chart. When the compressor is off, the fan is off. So the auto mode does not pick any cooling. And the right side, you can see the fan overruns and can pick up the cooling. But in only in five minutes after that, it cannot. So this is the uh, uh, impact on energy. Next, the fan over, uh, impacts of fan overrunning on dehumidification. So here, the dash line shows the latent cooling load, these two dash lines. And here is a zero reference line. Here is a, a zero reference line. So you can see when the compressor is off, the fan overruns, but it will create negative latent cooling load, 
which means the moisture will be added to the room because of the re evaporation of water. We can also see the same result based on the indoor relative humidity. So the red dots shows the on mode. You can see in on mode, the re evaporation re results in highest indoor humidity. So this is indoor humidity, relative humidity. And uh, in enhanced mode, it should be lotus because it has the dehumidification period. But actually you can see it's uh, almost, almost the same as the auto mode, which is uh, black doors, a uh, black square. So this is because of the re, -e -re -e cancels the e effect of the dehumidification period. And we want to see the impact of air flow rates. So we change the uh, rated air flow rate by the switch. And do I, uh, did another test. Then we can see the results. So the impact of air flow rates on energy, you can see the left chart shows the cooling load and the right side shows the COP. So the cooling, uh, total cooling load slightly increased at the same temperature, but the, but the COP is almost the same at different air flow rates. Next, when we reduce the air flow rate, so you can, uh, you can see the impact on dehumidification. So the chart is SHR versus the red return air relative humidity. So as the same condition, the uh, green shows the auto at 84% rated air flow rate, and the black shows the 100% rated flow rate. So you can see when we reduce the air flow rate, the SHR decrease which means the dehumidification capacity increases. We can also see the uh, of same results on indoor relative humidity. So the black is 100 rated air flow rate and the green is 84%. So you can see the 84 at 84% air flow rate, the indoor relative humidity can be perfectly controlled below 60%. So uh, finally, we will give some um, conclusions. So for energy performance, the cooling capacity and the COP are less sensitive to air flow rate. And for dehumidification performance, the indoor, humi uh, indoor humidity control can be improved by reducing air flow rate and uh, removing, air, uh, removing fan overrunning. And the recommendations in hot and humid climate zone, auto mode is recommended with appropriate air flow rate. So in this system, the 84% is recommended. And uh, the fat overrunning should be avoided. So uh, this is my presentation today. So any questions? <laughs>